Hello, nerds. Nerds for Yang. We've got a data details deep dive today for you all about Biden and Trump. Does Biden have any policies at all or is he just a warmed over version of Donald Trump from the Democratic corporate establishment? And would either one have any impact on your life? Well, let's go into the details. I've seen this conversation a lot on Twitter, but thought it might be helpful to look at the facts based on uh, sources available from the candidates themselves. So let's start off with uh, Mr. Biden. We're at the JoeBiden.com website. And if we go to Joe's vision, hopefully we're going to find some policies here. But let's probably look at what people care about. COVID, economy, healthcare. Sound about right? Hopefully. If not, I can make another video in the future. So let's see. What is his plan to beat COVID? So he talks about how it's a big deal, how it's been a... Not a successful outcome with Trump. Okay, he wants to stand up a pandemic testing board to surge free access to testing, double the number of drive through testing sites, build a contact tracing workforce, PPE supply chain and health records. Let's see, coordinated countrywide Future-facing national effort to acquire, distribute, and produce PPE, test kits, and machines. Utilizing the Defense Production Act. And focusing on hard-hit areas. American-sourced. Guaranteed priority access to national supplies of PPE. Premium pay for healthcare workers at risk. Emergency paid leave. Free, accessible, and safe housing for healthcare workers to quarantine. Healthcare worker COVID-19 consultation hotline, array of prevention and early intervention mental health services, accelerated development of treatments and vaccines. In fairness, I believe the warp speed thing is doing this, but we'll go to Trump in a second. Ha! Huh, help secure COVID-19 related research from cyber threats. Nationwide vaccination campaign. Restore our relationship with the World Health Organization. Establish and resource an emerging infectious disease clinical trial network to bring scientific talent together behind the most promising drugs instead of having different studies compete with each other. Ensure everyone, not just wealthy and, connect, wealthy and connected, has access to therapies. Get ahead of the seasonal flu. Reopen right. Guaranteed paid leave. Worker protection. Safe for Shoppers program. Well, that's kind of cool. Restart package. Child care programs. And then you've got protecting older Americans and high risk. National pandemic dashboard. Mm, that's kind of cool. Americans can check in real time. Gauge local transmission levels. Boost social security payments by 200 a month. Snap by 15%. All right, so basically a lot of testing, accelerated treatment, national coordinated op reopening, and financial assistance. Now we'll go to Donald Trump. This is the night, I have to admit, this is a beautiful picture with the dark um, helicopter, nice dark suit. Well done, Trump team. Um, let's see, what does he say about COVID here? Okay, coalitions, events, news, promises kept maybe? Search for accomplishments, COVID. So number one, very appreciate the search feature. Uh, okay, this looks like a list of things that he's done. So restricted travel in March. COVID-19 test results in 13 minutes. That's what he says. I don't know. I have a friend in Florida that took a week to get results. Uh, he just got his results a few days ago. But apparently here, it's announcing that it's ready in 13 minutes. Uh, rural community assistance. Provider relief fund. 
telehealth program. Uh, Comfort Ship in New York City. 40 million for minority services. Uninsured program portal. Increase in SNAP. Huh. So that's definitely what he's done, which I think as a sitting president is probably the most important. I'm trying to see like what he would do going forward. What's the COVID plan going forward? Um, hmm. Promises kept, maybe it's in the about section. Okay. That is not there. Is it in the coalitions? These are separate sites. Is there maybe healthcare workers for Trump? Okay, no. I doubt he would have COVID events. No, this is an actual event. Um, all right, well, I think we'll just keep it to um, basically what he did, which is, it looks like um, his argument would be that he restricted travel, got testing for anybody, I guess, yeah, I guess anyone that wants it in 13 minutes. If you got a test and you got your results in 13 minutes, leave it in the comments. I'd be curious about that. Uh, some more funding here and there. I would have to give it to Biden's plan. Now, you could argue whether he'll actually do any of this stuff. But certainly um, having a pandemic testing board, contact tracing, PPP, PPE surge, emergency paid leave, emerging infectious disease clinical trial network, Uh, small business restart packages, national pandemic dashboard, social security up 200 a month. I'm going to have to give it to Biden. Obviously, you know, full disclosure, I am supporting Biden, but I'm trying to keep this pretty uh, just the facts as much as I can. So that's COVID. Now let's talk about the economy. Build back better. What in the hell? I'm not sure about that name, but that's what it's called. What is he gonna do? Mobilize American manufacturing and innovation made in America. Okay, how is that? Strong industrial base. I'd be curious about that. Good paying union jobs. Mobilize American ingenuity to build infra. Yeah, clean energy. Okay, roads, bridges, got it. Build, mobilize American talent. How? Joe Biden will soon announce a plan to make it easier to afford childcare and ensure aging relatives and people with disabilities have access to care. All right, I need to see the plan, Joe. Mobilize across the board to advance racial equity. Dedicated agenda to close the racial wealth gap, expand affordable housing, invest in black, Latino, Native American entrepreneurs. Updated social contract that treats American workers and working families as, as essential at all times, not just in crisis. $15 an hour minimum wage. Protecting the Right to Organize Act. Paycheck Fairness Act. Okay. Small business support. Reversing some of Trump's tax cuts for corporations. Common sense tax reforms that make sure the wealthiest Americans pay their fair share. All right, it's okay. There's good stuff here. I'm used to more specifics, being a member of the uh, the Yang Gang and an early supporter of Andrew Yang, which, by the way, if you're still intrigued by him, 2024 is not too far away. But Biden could be a good transitional guy. So if I had to summarize, it looks like he's going to want to bring back some form of new manufacturing, infrastructure, clean energy, Minimum wage, right to organize. Yeah, very good kind of incremental moves forward. And then let's go to Donald Trump. He passed tax cuts. 
provided tax relief for 82% of middle class families. That's not an 82% tax cut. That's 82% of middle class families got, you know, at least a dollar in the cuts. Double the child tax credit. Double the standard deduction. Cut taxes for small businesses. Alleviated the tax burden on 500 companies. Uh, it's interesting they don't give you the percentage that they've alleviated the burden or the amount. I think that's probably because it was a lot. Uh, spurred new investment in the American economy. Repealed Obamacare mandate that everyone should have health insurance and made U.S. competitive by lowering the corporate tax rate. Wow, from 35 to 21 percent. Um, many companies don't pay any corporate taxes, but that's a again another video. GDP has soared in 2018 and the beginning of 2019. Today, not so much. Pro growth has generated six million new jobs. Unemployment rate lowest in 50 years. I think these are all numbers based on 2019. Um, but he did have a very good 2019 and we have to celebrate that. I'm not sure if we needed to cut taxes and slash environmental protections that much, but uh, the results are what they are. And then there's the apprenticeship stuff, which is good. And probably not as nearly as funded as some other things, but better than nothing. Empowerment of women. First ever whole of government approach focused on advancing women's free and full participation in the economy. I allocated $50 million for the fund. All right. So as a reminder, whenever you see these things about programs and stuff, like $50 million for empowering women, that's out of a $7.3 trillion U.S. Uh, budget. All right. So if I had to summarize, Trump is going on tax cuts, uh, trade deals, and deregulation, and pretty much riding high on his 2019 record. So you might be thinking on that unemployment rate stuff that, wow, you got to give Trump credit. It's a record low. Um, this is a chart showing the unemployment rate over time. And as you can see, Trump took office in uh, basically sworn in early 2017, so around here. And yes, it's true that it has been going down record levels, obviously until uh, the COVID response. But it has been going down. The one thing I would point out is that it's not like this line was going up every year under Obama. In fact, Obama took office in 2008. Uh, don't forget we had the global financial crisis. Um, and then since 2010, you got to give Obama credit. That line has been going down pretty much every year. And then you got Trump taking office here. I don't know that you could argue the post-Trump period, this line suddenly sharply dives down. It just seems like it's kind of continuing this trend, which then makes you wonder, like, well, did we need to give all those tax cuts to um, to the corporations and the rich? But just something to think about. There's Trump on the economy. So now we've talked about COVID, uh, the economy, and now let's talk about health care. So he's taking a little bit of credit for Obamacare where 100 million people don't have to worry about getting kicked off because they have a pre-existing condition and 20 million people got health insurance that didn't have it before. So that's cool. Um, what will he actually do? Give every American access to affordable health care insurance. So it sounds like a public option. Yes. Americans, a new choice, public health insurance like Medicare. Increasing value of tax credits to lower premiums for working families. Expanding coverage to low-income Americans. Middle-class premium tax credit to help pay for coverage. 
lower deductible, stop surprise billing, tackle market concentration, lower costs and improve health outcomes. Stand up to abuse of power by prescription drug corporations. Repealing the exception allowing drug companies to avoid negotiating over drug prices. Limiting launch prices for drugs that face no competition and are abusively priced. Limit price increase on all abusively priced generics. Allow consumers to buy prescription drugs from other countries. Terminate pharma tax break for advertising. Improving supply of quality gen generics. Expand access to contraception. Protect constitutional right to abortion. Reverse Trump assault on women's right to choose. Restore federal funding for Planned Parenthood. Rescind the Mexico City policy. What does that even refer to as a global gag rule? The rule currently bars the U.S. federal government from supporting important global health efforts in developing countries because the organizations providing that aid also offer information on abortion services. Reducing the high maternal mortality rate. How would you do that? Looks like California has a strategy that halved the state's maternal death rate. So you would, I guess, expand what worked in California. Defend health care protections for all. Doubling investment in community health. Mental health parity. Expanding access to mental health. Okay, supporting health, not rewarding wealth. The capital gains and dividends exclusion is the second largest tax expenditure in the entire tax code. He will roll back the Trump tax cut for the very wealthy, restore the 39.6% top rate when he negotiated an end to the Bush tax cuts for wealthy 2012. The Biden plan will assure those making over 1 million will, will pay the top rate on capital gains. All right. So I would say in terms of health care, in summary, this guy is basically a Obamacare with Medicare as an option for all who want it, kind of the Buttigieg approach, and uh, reducing the tax cuts and negotiating drug prices. Those are probably the highlights. All right, now let's look at President Trump on health care. Let's see what his plan is. The Department of Agriculture provided a billion. Again, remember this is a $7 trillion budget, but he did provide a billion to improve rural health care access. He removed the individual mandate. He's going to say this is an accomplishment. As a reminder, <laughs> this means that there are people running around without any health insurance in the U.S. and then who create massive costs for us with uh, unpaid emergency room care, but it's true that uh, health care is not free. So there are people out there now who are not required to have any health insurance, and that's in Trump's book, An Accomplishment. Extended the CHIP program to fund health care. Uh, mobilized his entire administration to address drug addiction. Okay, had a task force. Screening at the border. 900 million in opioid funding, pressure China to close loopholes. I don't know if any of that's been successful. It would be good if he had some numbers that show that the number of people addicted has gone down. And then um, approve the largest number of generic drugs in history. Um, so that's it. That's the Trump health care plan. That's the whole section, guys. Not a whole lot on improving access for uninsured or reducing the costs through negotiating with the drug companies. Um, but yeah, so that's Trump on health care. Next, I want to show you some data on Biden's nomination. I know there's a lot of people saying that, oh, they don't feel like he really earned it or this is some BS choice that the DNC is forcing on us. So I want to show some data that, I don't know if it refutes it, but it at least should give some more context. Before we get into that, uh, if you are finding this kind of video useful, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing it.
It means a lot to me and helps the channel grow. And for those who are really into this type of stuff, they become channel members. And I just want to give a shout out to them. First, our executive vice president level, Kristen Slevin. Thank you very much, Kristen, for your support. At the VP level, we have Chris, Joshua, Laura, Fat, JM, Sap, and V. At the hardcore level, we have Kirsch, Jekalego, Phoenix, Koa, Landline, DK, Tracy, David, Mrs. Jones, Gene, Chad, Mike. And at the verified level, we have Richard, Emily, Roger, Ben, Lori, Nell, Elizabeth, Soldier, Emerald, Mercy Ann, Miles, Verily, Doris, Shake and Make, Mike, Sophia, Jadwiga, Gail, James, Hitachi, Your Mom and Peter, Arez, Albert, Brandon, Yes, Sugar Sweet, Brian, Lisa, and Sydney, our first and oldest member. And a special welcome to our newest member, Richard Johnson and uh emily kingsley i don't think emily's new but maybe she changed her level recently either way thanks for all your support folks and now let's get on to data about did biden steal the nomination how can anybody want biden well here are the actual numbers from the primaries as you remember not too long ago there was a full-on Democratic primary with like over a dozen people running for it, including Andrew Yang, who uh, many of you watching this were supporters, myself included. You cannot take away from the fact that 17 million people or 16,586,958 people, half of the Democratic primary participants voted for Biden. Many of them could have stayed home, especially after everybody dropped out. But 17 million did show up and cast their and cast their vote for Biden. The next up was Bernie, who had 9 million. So just a little over half. And then you've got folks like Warren and Bloomberg, who got a little over 2 million. And then Buttigieg with 1 million. And then for those in the Yang gang, we got to keep it real. Our boy... Where is he? I mean, Homeboy is amazing, but he got 150,000 votes. So it's not like Biden stole this from Yang. I mean, freaking 17 million people said they want Biden. Now, some of you are saying, oh, that's BS. Everybody dropped out. You know what? Nobody forced Warren, Bloomberg, Buttigieg, even Yang to drop out. That was, Those are choices that they made. They probably looked, ran the numbers and concluded that they weren't going to get the most votes so say what you want about biden yeah you know what is he the most exciting guy in the world no he's not is he my first choice no but does he have policies yeah he does and are they going to move the country forward absolutely not only will they move us forward they will stop our decline into anarchy which is what i would argue we're getting with uh this fella, this, 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 uh, this Trump Pence combo. Oh, look, I've been selected. No, I will, <laughs> I will not be. What is this picture? Golly. Any rate, uh, hope this was helpful. Leave in your comments below if you want me to do more of these. I, I only touched on three things, COVID, healthcare, and economy. Um, I would love to hit on stuff like education, infrastructure, environment, maybe in the future. But let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time. In the meantime, keep it real, and goodbye, nerds. Bye, nerds.